All right, guys, we're back at the um, cylinder head again, and I'm going to go ahead and put in the uh, the cam position sensor here, and then I think I've, I've decided I'm going to go ahead and put the exhaust manifold on before I put the head in the car, because I'm thinking back to when I um, I put the uh, exhaust or exhaust manifold on in the past. There was a couple bolts that I had some trouble getting to, so. Um, I think it might be easier if I do it that way. So I've cleaned this up. I cleaned this up in the past, but I'm going to go ahead and lightly coat it in some oil. i also put some oil into the, into the bore that it goes in. I got a new O-ring here in my rebuild kit. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil on it. It should just kind of slide down in there. It gets a little tight at the O ring, but that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and start the bolt. So the manual says camshaft position sensor is 180 inch pounds. That is what? 15, uh, yeah, 15 foot pounds. So this is a 10 millimeter bolt. All right, so it's snug. Um, now we're going to torque it down. There we go. So what I want to do is I'm just going to turn this around. This stud right here, I assume it's stuck because the cylinder head, the new cylinder head, came with it. Um, already in there and that's fine the threads are okay so I think I'm just gonna leave it so the last time um, the last time that I messed with the exhaust manifold when the old one cracked and I put this new one on I broke let's see like three of the studs out inside of the block uh, I think it's kind of a combination of whoever put it on before me torqued it down way too much um, and the fact they were all seized up uh, kind of like these nuts are on the outside now with enough time and some, enough PB blaster you could get those to break free but there's really no need um, but what I want to have to do is because this has all that anti-seize lube on it from the last time that I put these in so I'm going to have to clean the threads out so by the way on a lot of this stuff I haven't I didn't take footage of a lot of it I have been cleaning all the threads out, and I do have a, um, I did clean out a lot of the threads that were in the block, you know, with a tap. So basically, what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna try to knock most of it out. And this anti-seize lube kind of turns into a powder. It's kind of like graphite almost. So it's not that hard to clean up. result is you know, pretty good all right so now I'm gonna work on uh, putting the exhaust manifold on this this actually threw me off a little bit I forgot about this stud sticking out of there when I took these off so since I'm not trying I'm not gonna try to take that one out because I assume it's in there because it's in there pretty good uh, and I really don't feel like breaking anything off in here right now um, we could get it out if we did but I think I'll leave it the threads are okay so I don't think it'll be a problem, but what that does mean is that I'm going to need one of these, uh, one of these nuts, off of one of my studs. So, what I've done is I've took um, uh, one of them, and since I'm not going to be using the studs, it don't really matter. But there's like a centerpiece uh, that, that sticks out a little farther, so I've clamped that with the, the vise, and I've been hitting this with PB Blaster uh, for about 15 minutes now. I spray it about every five minutes, so I'll spray some PB Blaster on it. So I'm going to try to break that free with my impact and then I'll have the nut I need for that stud that's stuck in there. All 
Alright, so let's see if we can get the exhaust manifold on. Alright, so the two that I just snugged down, um, I had already pre, uh, pre anti seized them. So this is uh, just the Permatex kind. I'm not tightening them down uh, very much at all, just enough so that it doesn't fall because I want to make sure all the holes are lined up. Last one is the uh, the actual knot that we took off. Please. All right, so I'm gonna look at the torque specs, and then we'll start torquing them down. These need to be torqued down to 20 foot pounds. Uh, it doesn't doesn't mention anywhere in the service manual about a certain pattern for for tightening these down, and I don't remember doing that in the past. Uh, so what I'm gonna do actually is I'm going to start on the outsides, well actually I may start on the insides and work my way out. So that's that. So I'm trying to determine if I should go sit the head in there. It is really rainy and misty and nasty outside and again I'm kind of doing this in a lean-to area uh, of a barn. So it's not fully sealed off, and I really just don't want to work <laughs> out there in that. Uh, but I hate putting it off. What I've done, I went, went ahead and did is uh, getting this ready to go out there. Like I have piston one at top dead center. Uh, I had to crank at top dead center, um, and I went ahead and set the cam at top dead center. And you know the cams at top dead center because there's this uh, there's this little notch in the cam sprocket. That points to that dot on the cylinder head there. Yeah, right there. So that is top dead center for the cam. And since my the crank's at top dead center, when I set this on there, I'm gonna want this at top dead center as well. So that's kind of the only preparations I've done there. Uh, I may go ahead and do it. All right, uh, we're putting the head on probably shouldn't but we are um, so I, what I've done is I've turned the head up and I've cleaned this surface off as, as good as I can get it um, just a little bit of lint in here I'll use a shop shop towel or a microfiber and see if I can make sure I have that as clean as possible um, also go ahead and put your uh, the little guide rods in in uh, they kind of just slide right in um, and so that'll guide you down onto the uh, down onto the block. So make sure you clean all this and make sure you have your two guides in. And those are all, actually those are on the intake side. So it's these holes on the intake side. Alright, so you're also going to want to make sure that um, 
you know, the whole mating surface where that head is going to go is as clean as you can possibly get it. Because this is kind of your last chance to, uh, to get it right. So I've cleaned this several times. I've scraped it several times. Uh, this is going to be my final time to get as much of the oil and grind off as I possibly can. And ideally, you should be able to be wiping it and you're not seeing much junk on your shop towel. So that's going to have to do, I think. So here we have our head gasket. Um, let's see. Which way does this go? Pretty sure. Let's see. I don't see any identifying marks that show an up or down. And the raised, raised edges appear to be on both sides. So I'm going to assume this Mizuno kit comes with absolutely zero instructions. I'm going to assume it's going to be the same either way as long as you get it on the right, the right side. Right, that's it right there, I think. So I'm going to go grab the cylinder head and um, hopefully guide it down into those holes right there. So even though we just have the head here and the exhaust manifold, this thing is uh, still a little awkward to handle by yourself. So I'm just holding where the uh, thermostat goes in the top of the cam sprocket and I'm going to try to try my best to guide it down in there. Like this, this little rail right here don't, doesn't get in the way. Dipstick's gonna get in the way. You almost work up, Mark, work up a sweat doing that. <laughs> uh, it's not supposed to be that hard. It's just me. Okay, guys. So, as you've seen, I painfully put the uh, cylinder head back on the block. Awesome. Almost. Looks like an engine again. Yay. So, um, I think I mentioned in a previous video, and it's a very important, and I know... I've seen some videos of people uh, making this mistake, and it's not a good mistake to make. Um, and if you read the service manual, it'll tell you uh, the head bolts are torque to yield bolts. Um, and a lot of times they'll look like this, where you see they. Uh, and it's not always the case. A lot of flange bolts look like this, but just be wary of any bolts that do look like this, any flange bolts like this, because a lot of torque to yield bolts are like this. Um, these are torque to yield bolts. So the original head bolts are, are no good after you take them out because when you torque these down, they're they're kind of stretched. Um, and I haven't looked at the process for this car yet. And uh, usually it's a uh, it's kind of a, a strange process for torquing these bolts down. Uh, but these are brand new head bolts. You can't reuse the head bolts that you pulled out of the head when you took the car um, apart. So. One test you can do, um, because I had so much trouble getting that uh, uh, getting that cylinder head installed, is to make sure, just double checking that everything's lined up, you can actually you know, take a head bolt and make sure you have the holes in the uh, head gas lined up. So if you stick it down in there, can you see that? Yeah. So if you stick it down in there and you twist a few times and you're catching some threads and the bolt's kind of locked in, you know uh, that the gasket is probably lined up. And you can try that in a few different um, bolt spots. So let's try here. 
Yeah, so we've caught, I can't pull that bolt out so we know the head gasket's lined up. I'm gonna take all these bolts. Uh, they come with these little caps on them. I wonder why. Hmm. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna take these bolts and I'm gonna go ahead and put them in. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, torque anything down. Ruby, jeez. Ruby. Anyway, I'm not gonna torque anything down. I'm just gonna kind of snug them, very, very lightly snug them, and then I will. Um, and then I will show you the uh, how to how to tighten these head bolts down, and this head will be installed. Uh, so I'm to the point now where I'm I'm getting ready to torque down the head bolts. These are the instructions for, uh, for the head bolts. Now this is pretty common for any torqued yield bolts. I've ran into torqued yield bolts before, um, so I figured it was gonna be something similar to this. Uh, usually it's tightening, loosening, tightening. So the steps are: uh, step one, you tighten to 37 foot pounds. Um, now you don't just tighten them all to 37 foot pounds, you still have to follow um, a sequence. So that is the tightening sequence there. The two metal ones, then you start going toward the outside. So each of these steps, I believe, uh, each of these steps you have to do uh, by this sequence here. So 37 foot pounds, loosen the half turn on the next iteration. 37 foot pounds again, tighten a quarter turn from step three. Remember, we're doing all these at each of these steps. Tighten a quarter turn from step four. Uh, step <laughs> step five. Does that say? No, okay. Okay, tighten a quarter turn. I thought it said tighten 20, and as my mind was about to be blown. I'm sorry, I read the wrong, wrong line. Let's give it a shot. First, uh, first set again, just to double check. You don't want to mess something like this up. Step one is 37 foot-pounds. And by the way, I'm using a uh, a 13 millimeter socket. Number two in the sequence is right here. Now number three is this one right here. Number four. Five is the one above it. Six. Seven, this is the top right hand corner. Eight, bottom left hand corner. Nine, top left hand corner. Ten, it's going to be the bottom right hand corner. Alright, so that's step one of five. Alright, step two is loosening a half a turn. Bolt one. So by half turn, I'm, I'm going by the position of my ratchet here, so my ratchet is going to need to be about 180 degrees from where it's at. So, two. We'll see. What was three? Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine. Now, I'm not going to say you don't have to do it a half turn, but it's pretty clear what this is doing. 
uh, it's completely breaking them free. I can unloosen them by hand now. Step three is tighten them back to 37 again. All right, we're still at 37 uh, foot pounds. I'm gonna tighten them back. Last one right here. Ten. Okay. Step three. Tighten a quarter turn from step. Okay. Now step four is tighten a quarter turn from step three. I'm gonna switch ratchets real quick. So we're gonna go about 90 degrees with the ratchet. That's a quarter turn. Almost there. Step five, tighten a quarter turn again. Okay. These are already pretty tight. I'm having to put some weight into it. So, with all this aluminum, it's kind of scary to tighten something this much. Especially when you're not using a torque wrench. Half turn again. Correction, quarter turn. I think we have completed this process. Very cool. By the way, if you have a flex, one of these flex head ratchets, um, this is, uh, I got some, some cobalt stuff for Christmas. And this is the cobalt ratchet. I have some Craftsman, some Proto, some old Craftsman, some old Proto uh, ratchets as well. But I don't, this is the only flex head I have. Uh, no. No, it's not, but it's the only good flex head I have, I think. So, for something like this, these little flex head ratchets are really nice because uh, I was dodging uh, the uh, power steering fluid tube there and the uh, dipstick back there. So, so, these flex head ratchets are pretty nice. Just thought I would mention that. Alright, so, um, I guess the next step for me... Now that we got the head on, is to put in the um, intake manifold, um, and I want to do that before I put like the motor mount or anything in here. Um, so I have, you know, some uh, a little bit of movement there with the engine because I'm gonna have to kind of uh, somehow get that in here. I don't know. I don't know if that was the best idea to put the exhaust manifold in without the uh, intake but all right we'll see the uh, the only thing I've already done that I didn't show you yet is there is a sensor down here but I went ahead and plugged this back in because there was no reason for me to take that out I'm gonna do one last check of the intake manifold before I uh, before I try to put it in here's the intake if you watch the other videos you know I've already done some stuff to this so I don't think there's much else I need to do to this but the one thing I'm I thought about when I seen this is I believe this is the um, the idle air control sensor or valve no it's a sensor yeah the IAC sensor whatever Ford calls it Fords have a lot of problems with these um, and, and actually when everything's back together these are kind of hard to get to uh, with everything back in the car and I believe my rebuild kit came with a new gasket for this. So I'm, I'm very tempted to take this out real quick and at least uh, clean it with some brake cleaner or some carb cleaner or something. Alright, so I have I took this off and cleaned it up as best that I could. Actually, if you see there's kind of like a spring or, or something in there. This is an essential. This is a valve. So this must be called the idle air control valve or idle speed valve or something similar I'm not sure what they call it the manual calls it an idle air control valve but the torque specs called it an idle speed valve or something whatever it's called it's a, it's a valve obviously now that I can see it I cleaned that out when I originally looked in there uh, you couldn't even tell there was a spring there it was just all everything in there was black so it was pretty coated with carbon buildup and or whatever else was in there so I sprayed that out a lot with a brake cleaner and carb cleaner and uh, 
well, hopefully it'll it'll help something, maybe prolong the life of this piece. This is like a $55, $60 piece. So, I, I, I wish I could have went ahead and ordered one, but I, you know, I didn't. This is just another $60 piece on top of a bunch of other $60 pieces that I've had to order. Clean that surface up pretty good, and make sure you have a new gasket for that. And that's going to be torqued down to, yeah, idle speed control valve is 84 inch pounds. I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. So I got kind of occupied cleaning up a few other things before I put the intake on. But the next thing we're going to want to put on, I think, is these two studs that are, that are different from the other bolts that the intake bolts on with. So these are kind of studs that kind of stay in the... Uh, stay in here. Let's see, there's the guide hole there. And I'm going to put these on to be to act as kind of a guide for uh, the, the um, runner. Alright, so I got um, the stud on the left hand side in. And I'm going to go ahead and try to start putting this one in. Alright guys, so uh, I ran out of time yesterday working on this. Um, I think I've got it all hooked up right. And I had to do some research and some troubleshooting to figure out how all this stuff went. Because, uh, like the rookie that I am, I didn't mark any tubes. So I'm just hoping that I have them all right. So I'm going to give you a uh, kind of a bird's eye view of... The intake manifold back there so if you're following along with this uh, you can kind of see how my hoses ended up because I really wish I had this a view like this of someone's uh, intake manifold last night because I searched everywhere I found bits and pieces of information but uh, kind of confusing some of the stuff coolant lines you know, little hoses that come off the main coolant line that hook into the intake manifold. Yeah, would never, would never thought that. I thought I had stuff wrong. Uh, I kind of remembered where some of this stuff went, and uh, when I was hooking it up, I'm like, that makes no sense to me. A uh, wide coolant line, but I guess they have to have some kind of air suction or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm not going to touch on anything. The very last thing I had hooked up was this. Uh, it's like a purge valve here. Yeah, some kind of purge valve or something. I don't know what it is. I'm sure it's in the service manual somewhere, but that, that service manual jumps around so many different places. Uh, I couldn't track it down. But this one, I had, undoubtedly when I had took the, uh, when I took the cylinder head out, I had, you know, bent this pipe up. And so, for some reason, I was thinking this uh, purge valve here connected uh, on the uh, breather tube or something. And I couldn't figure out, I have one, one nipple down here. I couldn't figure out what went on there. Um, but that's how it ended up. So, and really this would have been so helpful for me if I could have seen a fully functional engine because this may not even be right. I think it's right. Uh, I really wish I could have seen a, a, a view of this. Um, so I'm going to kind of see if I can help someone out so they don't suffer like I did. Hopefully this is helping somebody. Because it was a nightmare. Quite a mess. Uh, this tube is going to go to the uh, PCV valve on the, uh, or the it's the PCV hose that hooks to the um, the valve covers up here. And we have one more tube that comes out that side of the uh, valve cover, hooks over here into the um, where the air box is going to go. So. Besides hooking all that mess up, the throttle cables hooked in there, um, all the wiring's hooked in, I think, besides the O2 sensors for the uh, behind the catalytic converter there. So everything's hooked up, I think. I hope. We will certainly find out if it isn't. But I think I'm to the point now. Oh, 
this bracket, uh, I, you know, like I said previously, I had my bag of parts uh, in the trunk of the car. And I had my little card stock in there with written, written on it. Or actually, this was written on a bag. And this is what I put on the bag for that bracket. Wiring harness and fuel line bolt. And obviously, there wasn't just a bolt in there. There was this bracket. I couldn't, for the life of me, remember where that went. And now that it's on there, I still don't know what purpose it actually serves. Because, uh, you know, the fuel line is kind of housed in here. I guess maybe it stops it from dropping or something. Um, but it's certainly not really supporting anything. But maybe it's help to help support that runner. Because the, I don't know, whatever. That's where this piece goes. Um, and for the life of me, I can't figure out where the torque specs are for that. So I'm going to torque it down to 10 foot-pounds and hope I don't tear up anything. Uh, I looked all over the manual, the section, the section of your manual about... Uh, the cylinder head removal doesn't mention anything about that, and obviously that has to be removed uh, unless you leave the intake manifold on. Uh, also, the intake manifold removal. It mentions the uh, bracket under the car that mounts to the block. It doesn't mention anything about that one, so I don't know what those bolts need to be. And it's a pretty good sized bolt there. There's a bolt there, and there's a tiny bolt. That, that bolts onto the uh, uh, the runner down there. So no clue. I'm, the back one, the small ball. I'm gonna snug it down. This one, I may go ten foot pounds. I may go less, and I'll just have to check it every once in a while, make sure it's not coming loose. So unless somebody points me to where it's at in this manual. All right. Next task for me is actually gonna be putting the motor mount back in. I've got to get this thing off the stands. Um, and I think I'm ready to put the, the motor mount back on. So, alright, let me get to that.